2801 Stanton Road in the Southeast Quadrant of Washington, DC. We wanna give a shout out to everyone who's online today. We thank you for choosing to worship with us. We want to invite you to praise the Lord, whether you're gonna clap your hands or wave your hands or write in the chat. We encourage you to give us that response. If you find something that you know that's right, type it in the chat. If you hear something that makes you say hallelujah, write it in the chat because we want to have a vibrant worship service today. We thank Exhorter Lee for leading us in that awesome prayer this morning. And can we just give God a hand clap of praise for allowing us to wake up and to be clothed in our right minds and to be here on this Sunday morning. Praise God. The psalmist said, come let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout our praises to our protector who delivers us. We thank God for how we have made, how we've been able to pivot and shift even during our in-person closing. We have our very own musician, Brother Perryman, who's going to come and lead us in our hymn of praise this morning, How Great Thou Art. and bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord. Let's give the Lord some praise. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. God is worthy to be praised. And we need to praise God today. Amen. Because we know that God allowed us to wake up this morning. We need to rise and shine and give God the glory because he is still on the throne and he's still blessing us over and over and over again. Amen. Amen. As we continue in worship, we're going to have our invocation followed by the scripture lesson 
from Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 6 by Reverend Beverly Smith. And then we'll have our litany, a celebration of HBCU Sunday. And the call will be by Reverend Smith. And the response will be by Sister Candace Dula. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, it's in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, that we come with bowed heads and humble hearts in recognition of who you are. God, you are so great. You are so awesome. And we thank you for being our almighty God. It's in you, God, that we live, that we move, and that we have our being. And so, God, we come this Sunday morning to worship you, to praise you, to exalt you, to lift up your holy name. It is in you, God, that we come to, to just um, give you the honor and the praise. And so, God, as you come and tabernacle with us, we pray, God, that you will put clapping in our hands and stomping in our feet. And, God, give us a praise to worship you in the beauty of your holiness. For you are the reason, God, that we come to celebrate you. We ask, God, that you would bless our devices and our connectability. God, we ask that you would bless all of our family and friends and our members, God, that we would hear a right now word that would allow us, God, to not only feast on today, but also throughout the week. This prayer we ask in your son's name. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Beverly Smith with the scripture. And click on the camera. Click on the camera for me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, technical difficulties. Good morning, everyone. The scripture this morning comes from the Old Testament, King James Version, Joshua 1, 1 through 6. That's Joshua 1, 1 through 6. King James Version. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life as I was with Moses. So I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage for unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance in the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Amen. May God bless the reading of his word. A litany celebrating historically black colleges and universities. Historically, Black colleges and universities, also known as HBCUs, date back to the founding of the Africa Institute in 1837, which we know as Cheney University, to the establishment of Lincoln University, the first HBCU to grant degrees, and to the creation of Wilberforce University, the first school to be owned and operated by Black people. Founded to educate the sons and daughters of slaves, God's grace has allowed historically Black colleges and universities to exceed the original mission. 
Many historically black colleges and universities pass Christian principles down to their students, teaching them not to conform to the pattern of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of their minds. The HBCU culture dictates that students and graduates offer their studies and careers as sacrifices to God for the purpose of uplifting their communities. Historically, black colleges and universities search for cures to the diseases that plague our people, work to solve problems of injustice, and document the rich history and culture of Africans across the diaspora. HBCUs transmit the experiences and lessons of Black American history from generation to generation. They instill a sense of connectedness to our homeland and to her people throughout the world. Next. Institutions of love and charity like, please shout out your universities in the chat at this time. These institutions of love and charity teach us to believe in ourselves, to challenge our minds, and to achieve heights unfathomable to our ancestors. HBCUs play an essential role in the life of the Black community by providing education to some who might not otherwise attend college. Simultaneously, they push excellent students to reach their maximum potential. Our HBCUs are facing, are trying, facing times. trying times. There are, there financial, are financial difficulties, difficulties challenges, challenges of, leadership, of leadership, questions about their, about purpose, their purpose, and sophisticated, sophisticated strategies, strategies designed, for, designed their for their destruction. We maintain faith that our institutions will continue to survive attacks to their existence. We know that. Faith requires, Faith requires work. work. We, understand we understand that without, that without HBCUs, we stand to lose repositories for our history and safe spaces for education about our culture. We accept responsibility to ensure the bright future of historically Black colleges and universities. We commit ourselves to actively supporting these great pillars of the Black community. Amen. 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 And we thank Reverend Smith and Sister Dula for doing the call and the response for our HBCU litany. And we want to thank all of you for writing in the chat the different colleges and universities that you attended. We'd like to give a shout out to Bowie State University and UDC. We give a shout out to Spelman College and Tuskegee University. We give a shout out to Virginia Union University and UDC, the University of the District of Columbia, St. Augustine University, and Alabama A&M University. We've already, sh already shared Tuskegee University and Lincoln University. And what about Dillard University, North Carolina A&T, State University in Greensboro, North Carolina. And what about South Carolina State University? And we also have, again, the University of DC and Brooklyn Business Institute. I hope I said that correctly. Morgan State University, University of the Virgin Islands. Amen. Did I miss any? Praise yeah, God. And you can continue writing yours in the chat and we'll try to pick those up later within the service. Amen. Praise God. As we continue in our worship, praise God, again, we want to invite the voices of praise to bring us the Hello. melodies from heaven. Hello. Followed by, we're going to ask if you would mute your devices, please. Amen. We're going to ask the voices of praise to come and bless us with the melodies from heaven, followed by the morning announcements from our CIT ministry. Every praise. Every praise.
every praise is to our God. I tell you, those voices of praise got down this morning. Praise God. And did you see Miss Pat directing and the drummer and the musician? I tell you, I think St. John got one of the baddest choirs in Southeast D.C. on Fenn Road. Can we just give God praise? Because every praise is to our God. We thank God for our CIT ministry. Look what our CIT ministry can do. Amen. Praise God. Welcome to St. John CME Church, located at 2801 Stanton Road, Southeast Washington, D.C., where the Reverend Dr. Michelle F. Parker serves as the pastor. We welcome our family, friends, and visitors. We are glad you chose to worship with us today. We are a church in two locations, in person and virtually. Join us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Zoom. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul and all that is within me. Yes, praise his holy name. The mission at St. John is to create an atmosphere designed to help every person believe in Jesus, belong to a family, and ultimately become disciples working together to build the kingdom of God. Happy birthday to everyone born in January. We hope your birthday is filled with love, joy, and good health. Happy anniversary to our January couples. May your special day be filled with lots of love. Today, we celebrate HBCU Sunday. Thank you for wearing your favorite HBCU attire and paraphernalia. We are so proud of St. John's ministry to men who participated in the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Peace Walk. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once asked this question, what are you doing for others? This year, St. John will participate in Project Uganda, an evening of elegance. Can we count of you to give $15 in jewelry to bless the women of Uganda? We are still collecting donations. Your donations are greatly appreciated. Let's consecrate ourselves unto the Lord for the entire month of January by praying, reading our Bible, fasting on Thursday at 5 p.m. and eating healthier. The Lay Council will meet on Tuesday, January 23rd at 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. Please see Sister Johnson for more information. Join us for our monthly church conference on Saturday, January 27th at 10 a.m. Ministry team leaders are asked to submit reports to the office by Wednesday, January 24th. Mark your calendar. Connectional Youth and Young Adult Week will begin January 28th through February 4th, 2024. See Me Grow, Session 7 is just around the corner. See Brother Hyatt for more information. The Christian Educators Retreat will take place February 9th to 11th, 2024 at the Sheraton Hotel in Greensboro, North Carolina. See Exhorter Chadwick for more information. The Women's Missionary Council Executive Board will meet February 19th to 24th at the Hilton Charlotte Airport. Please contact Sister Herbert for more information. Our children's church will be held on second and third Sundays. Classes will be held in the nursery for children two to five years old. Classes will be held in the library for children six to nine years old. Join us every Sunday at 9 a.m. via Zoom. Rooted in God's word, growing in faith together. The new Bible study series, Heaven in View, part two, will begin on Wednesday. All our new members are invited to the new members class, which are held on the first and second Tuesday of each month at 6 p.m. via Zoom. See Reverend Beverly Smith for more information. Prayer is a powerful weapon. Join us this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. for prayer meeting. Catch the vibe with the Vibrant Church Initiative, Radical Hospitality, Passionate Worship, Intentional Faith Development, Risk-Taking Missions and Service, and Extravagant Generosity. Yes! Through prayer, we bring our requests and concerns to God. The fervent, effectual prayers of the righteous avails much. Prayer Matters 1 Peter 2 verse 24 says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. We are praying for you. Psalm 41 verse 3 says, The Lord sustains him on his sickbed, in his illness, you restore him to full health. 
Philippians 4 verses 6 to 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Prayer Matters God is close to the brokenhearted and those crushed in spirit. We are praying for the Nichols family. Lord, as we pray for our family and friends, we commit them into your hands. Jesus is not looking for fans. He's looking for followers. Dare to be a disciple. We hope you will enjoy today's sermon entitled, Let It Go and Move Forward, taken from Joshua 1 verses 1 to 6. God is taking us to the next level. Get ready to level up. Thank you for worshiping with us. God bless you and have a great week. Come on, let's get praise to our CIT ministry. Yes, somebody put in the chat, they're the baddest. I second that motion, amen. I'm just so proud of our CIT as well as all of our boards and auxiliaries. And today I'm especially I'm grateful to them because they are allowing us to stay connected, even though we are physically apart. As most of you know, we have our announcements. And in those announcements, we try to help you to govern yourselves accordingly. And one of the things that was in the announcement was about a special appeal for Uganda. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that after we do our recognition of visitors. So we want to say hello to all of those who are visiting with us today. We thank you for choosing St. John. And we thank God that out of all the churches in this nation, in this area, in the Southeast Quadrant, you chose to be a part of the St. John CME Church family today. And it is our prayer that something is said, sung, or done that will draw you closer to Christ. And if you would like to write your name and your church name, if you have one, and your pastor's name in the chat, we'll be more than willing to shout out your name. And if you don't have a church home, you can put that in the chat as well. To all of our visitors, to all of our friends, we say good morning to you and God bless you. Now, Uganda, this year for our Dr. Martin Luther King, um, the community service project, outreach project, we went all the way to Uganda to help 60 women there to have a wonderful afternoon of elegance. And this was in collaboration with Brother Sam Perryman. This is his dream. And we wanted to partner with him to help his dream to come true. And all we're asking is that, is that you would give a $15 donation so that we can give it to the women. We're hoping to collect 60 $15 donations, which comes to about $900. And then we want a little extra to help Brother Perriman in his travels as he travels from the United States to Uganda. Secondly, we want to supply these women with jewelry. So if you would either purchase jewelry or look through your jewelry boxes at home and find those beautiful pieces of jewelry that you would like to part with, and present as a gift to the window of Uganda. We will collect them during the week on Wednesday and Thursday. Also, you can bring it next Sunday, amen. Sam does not leave until February. So we still have time to collect the money and to collect the jewelry. And if you're making out checks or if you're using our online payments, be sure to put in the memo, Project Uganda. Project Uganda, and that way the money will be reserved just for this special project. All right, now yesterday we had a special day. It was called a day of prayer in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King, and every church was invited to do a community service project and to do a presentation. And so uh, we are going to show that video today about Project Uganda. John CME Church, D.C. is located at 2801 Stanton Road Southeast, Washington, D.C. 20020, where the Reverend Dr. Michelle 1L.F. Parker is the pastor. 
Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once asked this question, what are you doing for others? To that end, this year, St. John CME Church will participate in Project Uganda, an evening of elegance. Yeah! Brother Sam Perryman set the framework for international outreach as he visited Kampala, Uganda last year and supported the women of St. Michael's Anglican Church. Before returning home, he promised to do more. And I was at this church and I decided I wanted to come back and do something to support the church. He then inspired the leaders and members of St. John CME Church with a call to action. Yes, Lord. This year, in keeping with the mission statement of building God's kingdom, St. John answered the call for international community outreach. Listen to Sister Robina Nakabaira of the St. Michael's Anglican Church of Uganda as she provides some background on the planned outreach. Dear St. John, thank you for allowing our dear brother Sam to come to Uganda and share his life with us. We believe that he's a true man of God who wants only to love his neighbor as he loves himself. He has created an annual women's day picnic that I co-host with him. The women's group at St. Michael in Uganda appreciates his emphasis on women's issue, on women's issues since women are marginalized all over the continent of Africa. We are praying that you will help him realize his goal of connecting our women with the precious women of St. John. Meanwhile, we are eagerly awaiting his return to his second home in February 2024. Merry Christmas and God smile upon you. Reverend Dr. Michelle F. Parker, Brother Sam Perryman, and the entire St. John CME Church are proud to support this effort. Good afternoon, and welcome to St. John CME Church. Welcome! This is our Dr. Martin Luther King Community Outreach Service Project. This year is international. We're going all the way to Uganda. Brother Perryman is scheduled to return to Uganda in February to continue outreach by delivering the jewelry, funds, and observation of an afternoon of elegance. This international community outreach epitomizes the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. mantra and St. John CME Church is honored to support. We can't wait to see what God does next. If you want to be important, wonderful. If you want to be Recognize wonderful. If you want to be great, wonderful. But recognize that he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. That's a new definition of greatness. By giving that definition of greatness, it means that everybody can be great. Because everybody can serve. All right, St. John, give it up, give it up, give it up. Put some, <laughs> put some chats in there, some hearts in there, some hand claps of praise. That was an awesome presentation for our Dr. Martin Luther King Community Service Project. Brother Sam, would you like to say anything at this time? I know your heart is full. You're on mute, Brother Sam. Uh, yeah, my heart stays full, so <laughs> I, I guess y'all are going to have to get used to me because I'm just excited. I'm excited about the church. They are already talking about the St. John mission, and we're trying to find our beat. 
and we think we want to celebrate build. Um, I've already spoken to the pastor at, at a church there, and things are just kind of lining up. And I just thank you so, so much for for rescuing me, really, because I was out there by myself. Uh, but but it, it's just through the love of the church that's just uh, just shown me shown me another dimension of the church. And so I just can't uh, thank you enough, even at this point. So I just want to thank you. Amen. Amen. That's because you belong to our family, Brother Perriman. Amen. Praise God. Um, we do have some visitors whose names are in the chat. I want to give a shout out to Sister Stephanie Harris and to Sister Leslie Tibbs. God bless you. Amen for visiting with us today. We're going to ask our steward to come now and to make our offering appeal followed by the prayer. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Um, so following what, um, just this week, I had the opportunity on yesterday and Pastor already mentioned about the district prayer call. And it was really wonderful to see how many churches um, came together to participate in the MLK celebration, a day of, uh, a day on and not a day off. And, you know, along with the Uganda project that we're doing here at St. John, it was just wonderful to see what the other churches are also doing in the community and how they're supporting giving back. And, you know, when you actually see the work that we're doing and how, how many people have been able to impact from the homeless to um, giving uh, men haircuts in order for them to go to job interviews and just so many things that were done um, throughout the district. Um, it's just really uh, warms my heart and very humbling to see. And, you know, when you think about, um, you know, how much this pleases God, it just really, really, um, you know, humbles you a little bit to see the things that, and, you know, just doing something as small as making a sandwich and giving, I mean, it seems small to us, but how it really puts smiles on people's faces. And in 2 Corinthians, it says, each of you should give what you have decided in your hearts to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. And, you know, just along, it just really fills my heart to see what we were able to do. And hopefully you guys, um, if you're able to see that video, um, definitely take a look at some of the things we've done. So now it's time for us to continue to give back. Um, and God does love a cheerful giver. And here at St. John, we have several ways to give. Of course. We can always come once you're in service to 2801 Stanton Road. We have Givelify, Cash App, PayPal, and Bree. And if you have your phones, you can just pick up your uh, phones. Go ahead and scan those QR codes. And God does love a cheerful giver. Also, you can certainly come by the church to bring your um, offering on the Douglas Side Road. Drop it in the mailbox. Um, and certainly on Sunday mornings. You can also call a steward and we'd be happy to come by and pick it up. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for these gifts that have been given. We thank you for the giver. We thank you for those that wanted to give but were unable to give. We thank you for the greatest gift of all in your son, Jesus Christ. We pray a special blessing upon these gifts. Let them be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. This is our prayer this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for giving us that offering appeal. Praise God. Uh, as we continue in our worship service, we're going to have our brother Sam to come back and bless us with the sermonic selection of how great is our God, followed by the gospel message that will be taken from Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 and 
Then sings my soul, my Savior, God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. We praise God for Brother Sam Perryman and the voices of praise for blessing us with the music ministry today. We pray that you have enjoyed the worship experience thus far. Right now, I want you to take a moment and tag or text or call or email somebody right now and invite them to our worship service. Why? Because there is a word from the Lord that I am so excited to share with you today. Come on, let's let's break, branch out and let's invite, let's tag, let's text, let's call, let's email somebody and let them know that there is a word today from the Lord and we want them to be a part of hearing this great word from a great God. And again, we're certainly grateful for all the members and the guests of St. John who have participated in the worship service today. And again, we thank God for our CIT who has done a tremendous job in keeping us connected while we're physically apart. I do ask that you would pray for me as you can hear the struggle in my voice, but I'm trusting the verdict of God that he is able to keep me throughout this process of delivering his word. Amen. The mission statement at St. John is to create an atmosphere designed to help every person believe in Jesus, belong to a family, and ultimately become disciples working together to build the kingdom of God. And if you have a copy of the word, meet me in Joshua chapter one. I want to reread two verses, verses one and two. <coughs> And this is the word of the Lord, verse 1 and 2. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Moses, excuse me, spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Moses, my servant, is dead. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, and to the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. And with that, I want to tag for a subject this morning. Let it go and move forward. Let it go and move forward. I need about eight people to write in the chat, let it go. And I need about another eight people to write in the chat. Now move on. Let it go. Now move on. You know, I always like to start with a joke. And today, in celebration of women everywhere, I want to give this joke. There were 11 people hanging on to a rope that came down from a helicopter. Ten were men and one was a woman. They all decided that one person should get off because if they didn't, the rope would break and everyone would die. No one could decide who should go. Finally, the woman gave a really touching speech at how she would give up her life to save others because women were used to giving up things for their husbands, for their children, and for their families. All the men were so moved by her speech that they started clapping. <laughs> Some of y'all will get that later on today. <laughs> Let us pray. <laughs> Holy God, we are grateful for your amazing grace. We ask now, God, that you would extend your grace this way on this day. Stop by each of our homes and tabernacle with us, God. Lead us into your holy place where we may have a holy encounter and a life-changing experience. Lord, set a table where the youngest to the oldest can feast on your word. Give us the faith and the boldness to believe that we can let it go and move forward. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Heavenly Dove. Your main servant has need of thee. We recognize that in our human frailties and brokenness, we are not worthy to become before you at this sacred hour, but your amazing grace is sufficient. Clothe me, God, with your deutimous power. Allow your spirit to give me what I need. Help me to preach your word with clarity and sincerity. I submit to your sovereignty on this day. Speak, Lord, 
for your servant is listening. Speak, Lord, for your people are listening. In the effervescent, exemplary, ebullient, and everlasting name of Al Shaddai, we pray. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen. Let amen. it go and move forward. Let it go and move forward. Two weeks ago, exhorted doula, I began a sermon series entitled Good Grief, taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. In that text, the wise King Solomon reminded us, for everything there is a season, even a time to cry, a time to laugh, and a time to grieve. For those who are uninformed or may need a refresher, let me give you the cliff notes. Everybody at one time or another will go through a season of grief. Grief occurs as we experience loss, whether it's the loss of a loved one or the loss of a relationship, such as divorce, or the loss that comes from an unexpected job termination. No one, regardless of their gender, nationality, ethnicity, social economic status, or zip code, is inoculated against loss. We cannot escape it, nor can we avoid it. It's part of the life cycle. The truth is, life itself is transient, it's fleeting, and it's temporary. Life regularly challenges us with disruptions and interruptions. Just when we think things are serene, something happens that throws us off balance. Just when we believe our circumstances are steady, something comes along and rocks our world. Can I tell you that life is not all about gains, but it includes some losses as well. Even in our text today, Joshua and the children of Israel were mourning the loss of the great leader and the emancipator, Moses. Travel with me as we survey the literary landscape of Joshua chapter 1. The book of Joshua follows directly on the heels of the book of Deuteronomy. As the book begins, Moses had recently died. He had been, he had been Israel's leader for 40 years. He was the only leader they had, that they had known since leaving Egypt. Moses had also been Joseph's men, Joshua's mentor and model for 40 years. For 40 years, Joshua had worked beside Moses as his adjutant. Joshua witnessed Moses' personality, his character, and his decision-making responses to crisis after crisis after crisis. Joshua even observed Moses' relationship with God and Moses' faith in God. After all, it was Moses who was known as a friend of God. Joshua is now having a difficult time of letting go and moving forward. Joshua knows that Moses is dead. After all, he and the Israelites mourn the prescribed number of days. They are now stranded between the promise and the fulfillment. Can I tell you that there's somebody on your road who is stranded between the promise and the fulfillment? There are people who you know and people who I know who are stuck in the past and are having trouble moving forward into their future. Let me pull over and pull down the kickstand. Saints of God, it's not God's intention for Israel to remain stranded. And it's not God's desire for us to be stuck. And it is not God's will for us to remain stagnant. God reminded Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan. In other words, God is saying to Joshua, it's time to let it go and move forward. And that's a word for about 30 of you today. Some of us are still holding on to the memory of a relationship that ended 20 years ago. And every time you get around your friends and every time you get around your family members, re you remind them how Charles was the best boyfriend and how Charles did this and how Charles did that. And yet you fail to remember that you and Charles broke up 20 years ago. Charles moved on and married someone else and you need to let it go and move on too. 
Some of us are still reminiscing and bragging about the time you were the head chair leader or the captain of the football team. Beloved, that was 40 years ago and you were 40 pounds lighter. You need to let it go and move forward. Some of us are holding on to clothes in the closet that you know are too small. You need to let it go and move forward. And some of us are holding on to some old ways and some old attitudes. You need to let it go and move forward. We still like the children of Israel and like Joshua who are stuck between what, what once was and what is waiting ahead. We keep holding on to tradition and rituals, and the way things used to be because we have trouble letting it go. We have trouble trusting the future because the future is unknown. But the psalmist reminds me, Brother Sam, in the moments of loss and grief, I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from his sunshine for his skies may turn to gray. I don't worry about the future, for I know what Jesus said. Today, I'll walk beside him, for he knows what is ahead. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. And even as we reflect and reminisce and grieve the many losses that happened during the pandemic, amen, as we look back over our lives and as we allow the dust to settle and the air to clear, there were so many blessings that came out of the pandemic too. Saints of God, we learn how to let some things go and move forward. We learn how to pivot and make the shift. From the pandemic arose new possibilities. From the pandemic, we learned new ideas and new strategies and new methods of doing things. From the pandemic, it birthed imagination and innovation and creative designs. The pandemic produced a spirit of adventure, transformative leaders, and a spirit of invention. Our young people are now digital natives. Like the Jetsons, our children were able to go to school virtually without even leaving home. We are able to make online payments and deposit checks using online platforms because we learned how to let it go and move forward into the future. And what about online shopping, Sister Hyatt? I mean, Reverend Parker, our groceries, our books, and our clothes are delivered to our front doors. We have a viable CIT ministry because St. John learned how to pivot and make the shift. We now have church in two locations, in person and online, because St. John, baby, learned how to pivot and make the shift. If St. John didn't learn to let go and move forward, we would not be having church online this morning. We now have five online platforms reaching to at least five different countries because St. John has learned how to pivot and make the shift. We now have a viable online church school and three Bible study times because we learn how to let go of the past and move forward with the new. We learn how to make videos and PowerPoints because St. John learned how to how, how to pivot and make the shift. Baby, we become producers and editors and directors and influencers and photographers and executives of our own movies, of our own podcasts and YouTube channels. You learn how to use tablets and iWatches and iPads and iPhones because you learn how to pivot and make the shift. And some of you have learned how to change your backdrop on Zoom and you look like a million bucks. You look like a movie star on beautiful beaches and in gorgeous penthouses or at amazing arena sports, uh, sports arenas because you learn how to let go of the past and move forward with the future. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. So let me put this on your reel. When the man of God died, nothing of God died. 
I think I say that too. Even though Moses was dead, nothing of God was dead. God was and God still is alive and well. He is the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is Emmanuel, the God who is with us. God was telling Joshua to be bold, to face now, to embrace next, and to see new. And that's a word for about 25 of you. You need to face now. You need to embrace next, and you need to see new. Simply put, you need to turn the page, let it go, and move forward. God still had a purpose for the children of Israel, and the same is true for us. Even though we have met with some losses, God is able to bring forth blessings. He's able to bring forth miracles. He's able to bring forth progress out of grief and out of loss came blessings. So I'm letting go of regret. I'm moving forward to my next. I'm letting go of the past. I'm moving forward to my next. I'm letting go of my failures. I'm moving forward to my next. I'm letting go of my bad decisions, my heartbreaks, my unforgiveness, my disappointments, my toxic relationships. I'm moving forward to my next. And when each of us learn how to let it go, when we learn how to move to our next, baby, we will be in store for some blessings. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We can expect some great things. There's a song by Preisha Hilliard that has become my new mantra. Exhortably, she says, I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things, great things, great things. And then she says this, in my life, you do great things. In my home, you do great things. All around, you do great things. Eyes haven't seen. I choose to believe in great things. God bless you today.
In my life, I'm expecting great things. In my home, I'm expecting great things. All around, I'm expecting great things, great things. Hopefully today, the message has pierced your heart and allow you to believe and know that God has great things in store for you. He wants you to move from what once was to what will be. And that God is encouraging us and letting us know and he's still the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And yes, it's scary. And yes, we become anxious at times, not knowing what the future is. But can I tell you that God has a track record, that he's able to take us from where we are to where we need to be. And all we have to do is look back over our shoulders and see how God has blessed us all throughout the years, all throughout the month all throughout the weeks, and even all throughout the days. God has blessed us and moved us from what, what, from what once was to what is now to what will be. But we have to take that step and we have to trust God, even when we can't trace God and know that on the other side are great things. Perhaps there's someone here today under the sound of my voice who would like to accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Jesus lived and he died and he rose again as the lamb that took away the sins of the world. And when he died, he allowed us to now have a right to the tree of life, that we can be reconciled back to the father. And we thank the Lord for that. That was the gift that was given to us freely. It caused him his life, but he was willing to lay down his life to save us and to reconcile us back to the Father. And so all we have to do is accept Jesus' um, contribution or his sacrifice to us so that we could be redeemed. Believe in our heart, confess with our mouth, and we shall be saved. Is there one who wants to give his life or her life to Jesus? Is there one, not to the church, not to me, but to accept Jesus as your personal Savior? Can I tell you, you could have been in the church all your life and you could have made the walk to become a member of the church and still not be a member of the family of God. You have to accept Jesus as your personal savior. Is there one? Is there one who wants to give his life or her life to Jesus? You can write your name in the chat or you can unmute yourself and let us know who you are. Is there one? Is there one? Perhaps you already know the Lord. You have a relationship with him. You know him for yourself, but you're looking for a church home. We recommend St. John CME Church. Is there one who wants to join the family of St. John? Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Well, we praise God that all of you are saved. And we praise God that everybody has a right relationship with him. And we just give God praise. And it is our prayer today that the word that has gone forth, both in song and through the preach word, has pierced your heart and given you the confidence and the belief to know 
But there are great things in store if you would let it go and move forward. Amen. Amen. We're going to have our doxology, which has been created. We also, excuse me, we want to thank everybody for wearing your HBCU attire. Praise God. And we want to remind you, if you have not, to contribute your $50 towards the Uganda Project. And again, you can bring it this week or you can bring it next Sunday. Praise God. And again, hats off to our CIT ministry. You did the darn thing today. Thank you for keeping us connected while we're physically apart. Pastor, excuse me. Yes. There's a person that has a hand up. Hand up. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I'm not sure what the hand up is for, but maybe we pause and find out. Do you see their name? I don't see the box. I'm sorry. Um, I believe it's Stephanie Harris. Stephanie Harris. Okay, Stephanie Harris. Thank you for helping me. Stephanie Harris. Can you unmute Stephanie Harris and talk to us? Hi, yes, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, we are a family of uh, Brother Greg Harris. We oh, would love yeah. to become members of the church, even though we are not um, in the area. I have been tapping in every Sunday. Um, and just really enjoying everything and taking it all in. It's been quite an experience for all of us. Can we just give God praise? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Stephanie and her husband and her children were visiting with us in the month of December. They came to bless our beloved brother Greg with two G's Harris for his birthday and for Christmas. And we were so happy to meet them and to greet them. And we thank God that something was said back then in December that allowed you to continue to come every Sunday, praise God, to be a part of our worship experience. And we do have digital members. So (laughs) we thank God for you. And that's the beauty of online platforms. And that's the beauty of having two churches. I mean, yeah, um, church in two locations, both in person and online. So God bless you. Stephanie, can I ask you a few questions? Sure. Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? I do. Um, I grew up in a very religious Pentecostal home. My dad was a deacon. Um, So very familiar uh, with the word and, you know, always had a relationship with God. Um, Amen. Yeah, it's been a journey. (laughs) Awesome. 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 Praise God. And the second question I have for you, is it you, your husband, and your children that's joining today? Yes, we are. Awesome. So your husband, (laughs) your children, and you. Yes. Yes, we are. Two children? No, there are five of us, uh, five children. Um, and my husband and I. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. So what I would like for you to do, and CIT, I need you to help me. When we finish with the um, doxology and the benediction, if you would allow myself and Brother Greg Harris and um, the family, the Harris family, to join me in a room where we can get that information from them. Sure thing. Okay. So please stay on. Are we able to do that, CIT? Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. I tell you, God is doing great things. Y'all need to give God praise. Y'all need to put it in the chat. Uh, Five children and two adults. Oh, my goodness. Who bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. God is doing great things. Brother Greg Harris, you have anything you want to say? I know you are rejoicing. You probably are just shouting right now. Brother Greg. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do praise the Lord for the increase, and we praise the Lord for all the deposits that you have made in the life of your family. Amen. And we just give God all the glory and all the praise. Ooh, 31 days of consecration. Ooh, we thank you, Lord. Ooh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Brother Walter is a videographer, and he is our own, and we thank God for his creative design. 
he created this video, um, the doxology, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Can we give it up for Brother Walter Flush? Woohoo! Yes. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Brother Sam Perman, thank you for making that pivot and that shift and pre recording the music ministry. It was so awesome. And thank you for digging into the archives, CIT ministry, and bringing up one of the videos so the Voices of Praise could do their min music ministry today. Amen. And thank you, St. John, for helping me to see the hand of Sister Stephanie Harris and her family members. I didn't see that. And I'm grateful for your assistance and your help. 